What is definition? Is it simply the determining or settling of something? Or a statement of the meaning of a word or a word group? Or is it something else? Is it also a definition? Perhaps it is more along these lines. Because the Phoenicians and the Canaanites have defined the way that we speak and the way that we listen or hear each other. To be a deaf Phoenician means that one stops at what the words are defined as in the dictionary and doesn't look into the deeper etymology or the phonics of what the word is actually saying. It is my intent to give you, the listener, a key, a key that has been hidden by the secret societies of the world, such as the Knights Templar. In fact, Templar is actually Spanish for key. A key is a means to open something that is locked. And once you have the key to unlock these secrets, everything will start to make sense in your life and this reality. To ensure that this key works, four things will need to be utilized. First, one has to understand the basic definitions of the word being looked at. Secondly, the etymology will have to be looked at as well, which is basically the study of the origins of the word. Thirdly, the phonics will have to be used, and this is where the Phoenicians are tied into phonics, thus Phoenicians, phonics. And that's where we get Phoenix from, or talking on the phone. Thus, the Phoenicians gave us the word for phone and phony when someone sounds phony on a phone. Phonics are also how the words are heard towards us, such as the word C. When you look at it, it's either the letter C or C as in an ocean, like a C. And when we see with our eyes, I'm using the same word to describe different things. But when you understand the deeper levels of this, they actually all interconnect and tie together. Lastly, word splitting will be necessary. And that's basically where we take a portion of the word, such as the prefix or the suffix, and we look at alternate definitions within that and to see if it links to other languages. And the word splitting itself can be brought down to basically nil right down to the very letter. And this will be very important as well in our understanding. An easy example of word splitting can be given by using the word language, where we would have lan, gu, and age. When we take lan in its Chinese and Vietnamese context, it's actually the feminine name for orchid. But in Vietnamese, with a accent over the A, with lan, we actually have a different male context with a creature called the Tai Lan. And that was a dragon type creature that was said to only protect the noble ones. And it was also known as the Ki Lin. Uh, Gu is the god of war in the Dahomey mythology. So now we have two tie ins where we have a monster that protected the noble ones with lan and Gu, a god of war. So Lan Gu and age is obviously through the ages of the zodiac or how we age through this reality. So thus Lan Gu ages languages would mean that we have a monster that protects the noble throughout the ages of the zodiac. So who or what exactly is that monster? Well, that's what we're going to find out. But first we have to do some more digging and go through some things that should be basic and general knowledge, but unfortunately is not, such as where the days of the week actually get their names from and what they actually represent. So Sunday, uh, to start off, is actually representing the sun, obviously, Sunday. And I'm going to tie this into one or two different languages. In the case of the days of the week, it'll actually be Romanian. 
and the French language actually is pretty close to the Romanian, but I'll stick with the, the former for now. In Romanian, Sunday is actually known as Duminica. Monday is the moon, and in Romanian, this is known as Luni. Therefore, we have Lunitic, or a Lunatic. Luna is another name for the moon, obviously. Tuesday is Mars Day, and the Romanian language reflects this with the word Marti, thus Marti Day, or Mars Day. There was also a god named Tiu, or Tiu's Day, and that's where the English language uh, gets the word Tuesday from. He was also a god of war. Wednesday is Mercury's Day, and the Romanian language reflects this with the word Mercury. In Anglo-Saxon paganism, the god for this day was called Wotan, or Woden, thus Woden's Day, or Wednesday. Thursday is Jupiter, the word in Romanian is Joy. In Norse mythology, Jupiter was known as Thor. This is why we have Thor's Day turned into Thursday. Friday is Venus and their word is Veneri. The Galatian word for Friday is Venris, thus reflecting the tie into Venus a little more closely. Again, in Norse mythology, we have the goddess for Venus being called Freya. Therefore, we have Freya's day and now Friday. Saturday is Saturn's day. That is pretty obvious just from the English language alone, Saturn Day, and the Romanian word for that is Sambata. It is really amazing that this basic knowledge is not taught in school. Basically, no one knows of these things and the astrology behind it, and it's going to be very significant to keep all of this in mind and to also take note that there's no Earth Day. That's going to be very significant as we keep going along. Due to the large volume of information that is going to be presented for the rest of this video, I will not be providing many pictures, but will have you, the listener, almost entirely concentrate on the written words being shown while I speak. There is another reason for this. I do not want this information to simply be a form of infotainment. We are going to first look at the process of commerce as pertaining to the Phoenicians, who are known as the great merchants of the sea, and why this process, with all of its complex implications, continues unabated to this day, albeit for very sinister reasons as will be shown. Let's first look at how one is born into the world, or world into the world. Why are we world? First off, from a pedantic perspective, this should be obvious since the world is world on its axis. The writers of the Matrix movies also knew why, because the main character Neo is actually derived from the Latin word neo, that means spin, weave, or produced by spinning. How this process works in our reality is similar to the way the colors on a DVD movie are read by the DVD player. Each color is separated and read at different intervals of time. This is an exact correlation to the different distances of each planet from the sun and the different lengths of time each planet takes to whirl around its own axis while also being spun around the sun. The sun is the centrifugal force which each body is forced to be pulled and pushed away from. This separation works in a seven-step process, which is why there are seven major planets that give us the seven days of the week. There are seven notes in a mode of music, and we also see seven colors in a rainbow. The symbolism of the rainbow alone is extensive, and should be researched more deeply. The colors, sounds, and worlds that are world are all separated, because the prefix sep comes from the Latin septuma, meaning seven which gave the word September, which was originally the seventh month of the Roman calendar. There are seven shockers within the human body that the ancients called the spinning wheels of light. This is appropriate, 
because these colored wheels are world and we live in a world of colors because we are hue mans hue is simply a word for color and the quality of the colors determined by the dominant wavelength of each color the latin word ue literally means hither and to this point place degree indicating that it is the colors that resonate to a certain wavelength frequency and formulate the reality that we currently find ourselves in there is an astounding amount of indication and evidence to show that we are multi-dimensional beings that are caught in a cycle of separation with a certain mathematical ratio of vibration waves holding us prisoner in a DVD movie-like loop. The ratio is the ration of the god Ra, Ra Tio, ratio, within this base 10 reality. Ten fingers and ten toes, as the Swedish Tiu states with the meaning of 10. The fake gods that hold us all prisoner also need to ration us because we are their food and a ration is the food allowance given for one day. The sep a ration that is given to the gods while we exist inside of this DVD matrix reality. Matrix is furthermore the Latin word for womb, which is where our body ship is birthed or birthed. All ships find their birth when they reach the port or dock. When Neo woke up in the Matrix, he was inside a battery womb or iPod, which is why Apple Computers sells everyone iPods and iPads to reflect this. One definition of pad that concurs with this is that of a temporary living quarters. We are all living in our iPads or iPods because we bit the apple of sin. The word apple is also phonetically spoken as apple because our body ships are receiving a toe, toe on the conscious dream line of a reality, which is why we have a skull. A skull? Yes, because a skull is an oar that is used for sculling, and sculling is the propelling of a boat by an oar over the stern. When someone is commanded to do something and prodded in a certain direction, their instructor is said to be stern with them to get the point of the command across. And this point is usually finalized with a stated warning vocalized as, or else. The or or else has a dual meaning. The first is obviously the metaphor of being towed in the body ship by time, which tows us in the skull, skull. And the second is that we are commanded to follow the orders of the DVD storyline that has been handed to us, since we have become the property of the god known as El. Hence, do what I say or else, indicating that if we do not follow the storyline, we will be punished by El. It is also no coincidence that the term sculling also has culling after the letter S. To cull something is to collectivize it, select the best or worst parts from it, and then pluck those parts. This is what is happening to every individual consciousness, and essentially no one is even aware that it's happening. Even as these things are told, they sound so fantastic that most likely they are either shirked off ignored, or simply laughed at. Those are the typical responses of fear, especially in regard to substantial truths being told that are contained within the psyche of the collective subconscious mind of humanity. This psyche has been taken over by the ones who now tow us in the skull. We are towed in the skull because there is a toad in our mind that is towed around, thus pointing out the facet of our reptilian takeover, which is known as the R-complex of the brain. This is also a whole study onto itself.
every ship, including the human body, is eventually brought into port and is then docked. This is why there is a doctor that delivers the body ship because it is a new liver being produced, another living being that is being delivered by the doctor as doctor. Hence, doctor is phonetically doctor. And you as the living human being are the ore, ore that is going to be mined for gold in your mind. Because mind is mind, giving us the actual basis for the Sumerian depiction of the Anunnaki coming here to mine for gold. Because we are the human resources that mined for gold. This also displays the fact that humans are seen as the chattel property of these false gods since we are the ones they mine and when someone states that something is theirs they say that it's mine. We are the endless resource being mined, mined and companies do not have human resource departments because the title sounds fancy. You are also the ore which has an ore because you are the body ship that needs to paddle through this existence which is a sea of electricity. Doctors use paddles to resuscitate someone who is in cardiac arrest for this reason. What do they use to resuscitate the patient? Electric currents just like the sea that has currents. What else do doctors do? They perform surgery because it is an electrical surge to the body of the patient, thus surgery. The doctor is also the connection to the body ship and sea terminology, since the doctor has delivered the doctor an oar that is sitting in its berth and no longer rowing. The one that is going to be sold as capital currency, which is electric and sea-like currency. You see? Take a look at this Hebrew word. Does it look familiar? Perhaps like Neo again? Well, in Hebrew, this translates into English as pin, and the Vietnamese word pin means battery. Taking this further, the Vietnamese language also has the word now, but it translates as anchor because once a ship is docked, the anchor needs to be set down, therefore giving us the connections of Neo the battery who was anchored in his matrix womb being used as docked ore, the energy of electric gold making. This Hebrew word can also be spelled out as such, which can be written out as sukkah and is phonetically pronounced as sukkah. This Hebrew term translates into English as thicket and booth or rude temporary shelter. The booth of Neo's iPod. Did you really think that it was just a movie? Again, the languages have been around for far longer than that Hollywood production came out. And I encourage everyone watching this to check out every single translation and word that is being presented. Like I said, this goes deep, and these examples are just the beginning. It would actually take many lifetimes to go through all of these connections in every single word in every language. Not to mention the languages that are extinct and unknown. Once the human is birthed or birthed, they are also docked in Ur by the docked Ur, hence docked Ur. What is Ur? It was an ancient Sumerian city that housed what was known as the Ziggurat of Ur, also called e temen Nagiru. This word meant house whose foundation creates terror. Everything in this reality is designed to make us fearful, and this starts right at birth. Interestingly enough, the patron deity of this city was the Akkadian moon god known as Sin, and it has been said over and over again to humanity that man is born in Sin. 
Man bit the apple to then be continuously reborn in his and her apple iPods, which becomes an unrepayable debt. What is the Merriam-Webster's number one dictionary definition of the English word debt? Sin. To pay the debt of sin, which is the price of our birth and birth in the moon. Remember that the seven days of the week do not include an earth day, since man is truly born in sin, the moon. The ancient accounts and stories of the man on the moon is literally about mankind in the moon. We are all the children in the attic, so to speak, and this will become clearer as we go along. First we are born, and begin to be used as battery energy, as the French language agrees, since the French word borne means pin, terminal boundary, stone, as associated with the Vietnamese word pen, meaning battery, and the Hebrew word is shown for pin. The stone that is the terminal boundary is the moon. This use of the word pin is the reason that banks get you to use a pin number when using a bank card. Don't quite agree yet? Well, the Spanish word borne translates as terminal and point of a connection to a current of electricity. When people travel to and from airports or bus stations, where do they arrive and depart? At the terminal. When people vote, where do they do so? In a voting terminal or a polling, polling station. In actuality, people are voting, not voting, because they are going to the poles, which are the electric battery poles of positive and negative, to place their volts on the candidate that they want to see put in charge. The politician that receives the most volts votes is the one that is going to be put into the position of power. It's not called power politics for nothing. So far, the listener might be saying to themselves, What? Precisely, what? A watt is a unit of power that is equal to one joule per second, and this correlates with the situations when people say that someone isn't very bright because they need to ask the same question over and over again. What? 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 That person is said to be dim because they are not enlightened. You could, of course, refuse everything that is being shown, but that just creates a negative ionic polarity charge within your own biology. Hence, to refuse, because a fuse is an electrical device that can interrupt the flow of current if it becomes overloaded. I trust that this will not confuse the listener. Let's continue on. What is the definition of born? It is the past participle of the word bear, which is the reason that mothers are said to bear children. Children that arrive bare naked into this reality. By definition, to bear something is to also take on the debts of another person. What debts? The price of sin, of course. The price that one pays to be born in sin, the moon. The same moon that also came to rescue you from sin. This is why the Sumerian Anunnaki lord known as Enki said that the first things are the last things. We are born in sin, the moon, and we all die in sin, again the moon. This is the basis for the white light program that people see at their death when they are welcomed by the false representation of their loved ones. The terminal that everyone goes to during their departure from this reality. This is nothing more than an afterlife program written by the false alien gods who control every one of us who lives on this planet. Wait, that's not correct. It's every one of us who lives on this plan ET. There we are. And just for reference sake, here is one example of them 
telling us this in one of their television programs. I don't care. I'd rather be here in spirit than not at all. A captain doesn't abandon ship. Every hour you stay here makes it that much more difficult to leave. Why are you pushing me? I've made up my mind. I'm staying here. The cortical stimulator is working. I'm getting a weak pulse. She's coming back. I'll use cortisone along with the stimulator. What was that? What happened? What do you mean? I saw Tuvok and Chakotay and the doctor. Here? No, it was different as though. As though I were looking up at them. An hallucination like the others. Oh, I didn't feel like the others. I didn't see myself. I was looking up at them. That's the real me, isn't it? Lying on the ground on that planet, dying. And this is the hallucination. This isn't real. More denial. You're only making it harder on yourself. You're trying very hard to convince me to come with you. Why is that? If what you're saying is true, why not let me come to the decision on my own? I'm trying to spare you unnecessary pain. My father would never act like this. He always believed I had to learn my own lessons, make my own mistakes. He never tried to shield me from life. Why would he try to shield me from death? You're not my father. I could be imagining you, but I don't think so. You have such a specific agenda. You're determined that I go with you somewhere. Who are you? I'm trying to help you. Stop fighting me. Are you an alien being of some kind? Is that it? Our eyes are open. Vital signs are responding. Blood pressure 60 over 30. But the entity is still inhabiting her cerebral cortex, impeding your treatment. Catherine, hang on. We're bringing you back. Just fight a little longer. Direct synaptic stimulation might drive out the alien presence. I was right. I heard Tuvok and Chakotay and the doctor. You're an alien. You've created all these hallucinations, haven't you? This is what my species does. At the moment, just before death, one of us comes to help you understand what's happening, to make the crossing over an occasion of joy. And what is that? Our matrix, where your consciousness will live. I was being truthful when I said it was a place of wonder. It can be whatever you want it to be. Then why didn't you tell me this from the beginning? Why pretend to be my father? Usually people are comforted to see their loved ones. It makes the crossing over a much less fearful occasion. I've done this many times, but I've never encountered someone so resistant. Something's happened. The alien presence is getting stronger again. Fight it, Catherine. Fight it just a little longer. I'll have to try a Thoron pulse. My people are telling me to fight. They're trying to save me. They're trying out of desperation. It's hopeless. You're the one who sounds desperate. I don't get the feeling you're trying to make me comfortable. You're only interested in my agreeing to come with you. Because it's inevitable. And you don't strike me as any kind of good Samaritan. You're more like a vulture, preying on people at the moment of their death when they're most vulnerable. I've waited for you. I've been patient. But your patience is wearing thin. What's the real reason you want me in that Matrix? Somehow I don't think it has anything to do with everlasting joy. You must go with me. If you could force me to go, you'd have done it already. You need me to agree, don't you? I have to go voluntarily. Wouldn't that be better than standing here in this endless debate? Let me tell you this. We can stand here for all eternity, and I will never choose to go with you. You're in a dangerous profession, Captain. You face death every day. There'll be another time, and I'll be waiting. Eventually, you'll come into my matrix. And you will nourish me for a long, long time. Go back to hell. God. What does the Latin word coda mean? It means penis. And once you go through the alien white light program where you think you're going to be in heaven, you are simply being thrown back into the matrix again to be rebirthed. The first things are the last things. Here are a few biblical passages that tell us about our situation.
Once you are born again, your parents, or the pair that rents, hence pair rents, give you a name. They give you a name because you're going to be a nice sheep, you, that follows what the majority tells you to do, just like a good battery slave. When something disgusting happens, what do people say? Ew. This is because the alien gods see us as disgusting pigs who need to simply be slaughtered and used for food energy, which is all a divine comedy to them. Take out the letter S in slaughter and you are left with laughter. It's a divine comedy, like Dante wrote in his epic poem about hell, purgatory, and heaven. Since the Latin comedi literally means eat, eat up, consume, devour, chafe. Chafe? Yes, because chafing produces friction, which is what creates conduction for electric currents, and everyone is using the alien debt notes erroneously referred to as money, when in fact these are nothing more than a form of legal friction. Ever wonder why some people rub you the wrong way? Why do pair rents give you, you, a name? Because a name is a name. Exactly the sound that a horse makes, which is why we live beside neighbors. Even when voting or voting for something, you will either give a yay or a nay to what is being presented. Think that's it for the horse connections? We've barely scratched the surface. Usually the pair rents will get married because to be married is to be married, whereby mare is the Latin word for sea as related to the body ship and is by definition an adult female horse. A mare is also by English definition one of the large dark areas on the moon which gives us one of the reasons for the word night mare. All terror is born of the moon. The latter word split of Eid from the phonetic mare Eid is a Dutch word that means oath and is phonetically pronounced to sound like eat. The moon gods that eat us. An oath is a divine promise, which is what marriage vows are set up as. Therefore, a mare age, marriage, is a divine oath to the moon made by the horse or phonetic horse, because we are made into the horse of Babylon that babble on about X to carry the electrical connections forward through sexual rebirth copulation. You will soon see why we need to keep saying X. Another anagram for horse is shore, because when you are birthed, you have reached the shore line of this reality and given liberty. You do not have freedom. You have been given liberty which is a short shore leave from naval duty. How are you connected in the womb matrix? Through the naval cord, because you are a sea man, sea womb man, who has reached shore by way of the horse, horse of babble on through the sperm or sperm called semen. All naval crew are called semen. And if you're still laughing like you're in grade two overhearing this, you are literally laughing about yourself and the rest of humanity being used as food for the gods by getting us to constantly breed their daily bread for them. Their bread is humanity's bread, or newborn living fetus. Fetus is a phonetic tell, meaning feed us. Information like this is not meant for immature minds, which is probably why it has been so easy to hide from the majority. A basic English synonym for copulation is sexual congress, because all statutes and acts written by congress have to do with the control of the battery energy made by the sexual congress between the male, male, and female, male. 
The male delivers the male into the female for the price of postage. It is delivered with postage because every new birth has been given a military office that is called a post. From your father's post to your mother's mailbox. There is so much hidden sexual innuendo in the languages that it truly is not funny, only disturbing. The contract of marriage, marriage, confirms the oath taken promise to securitize the entire process. Once born, the child is told to celebrate their birthday from the moon by eating cake. Why cake? Because the Latin word placenta literally means cake, flat cake, and the placenta is the vascular structure in a woman's uterus that provides oxygen and nutrients to the fetus and transfers waste from it as well. This is where the popular expression, you can't have your cake and eat it too, comes from, since the gods cannot use us as battery energy and eat us at the same time. The saying is also a paradox, but that's beside the point. When people eat cake on their birthday, they are consenting through ritualistic ceremony to their enslavement inside the Moon Matrix Rebirth Battery Program, where everyone is a docked biological battery placed inside their eye pods while hooked up to individual placenta nozzles. The placenta nozzles that feed you, give you oxygen, and carry out your wastes. In this same context, what does the Latin word cervix mean when translated back into English? Neck, nozzle, spout, back of the neck. Exactly like the Matrix movie showed everyone. We are in cervix, service, to the gods, because we serve X, hence cervix. The prefix of the Latin placenta is the Latin word pla, which means x times is great, multiply by x, increase x-fold. x is the Roman numeral for the number 10, which is the 1 and 0 of the matrix binary computational hologram reality that we find ourselves in. x is also the chromosome that is present in both sexes, singly in males and doubly in females. The post office delivers the male X into the double X box of the female to immaculately deliver another child. Why immaculately? Since everyone is separated by their iPods and living inside this hologram reality. We are all physically separated and our pineal glands literally make this computerized dimension seem so real that basically no one would guess that it's not. We connect with one another in the telepathic field of electricity consciousness. Our genetics, therefore, have to be stolen from us by the guardians of the garden, by having us imagine telepathically that we are congressing with one another. This is the worship of Satan, because Satan is Satan. X is the Roman numeral for 10, which is indicating the X chromosome. And once a male and female have delivered their belief in copulation to their lord and master, they both say ten. Once this occurs, the genetics from the couple are taken by the guardians, smiths, and transferred into another biological form, which is then placed into their own iPod to continue the battery cycle. This is why love is evil, spelled backwards because we are the wards that have our energy sucked from our backs, hence the back wards.
We live in this existence because X is tense. Why? Precisely because of Y. The Y chromosome that is bundled inside the male and is calling out to be released for a new lease on life, which is going to create another X tension cord in this matrix electric battery reality. X is the symbol used in electric terminology for the reactants expressed in ohms, and a Y is a three-phase, four-wire electrical configuration where each individual phase is connected to a common point of the Y. This process of regeneration of the electric X and Y chromosome is perfectly symbolized in the Olympic Games relay race. A relay is an electrical device used to switch currents on and off between circuits, which is why life is a circus. The Latin word circus translates into English as racecourse, celebration of games, circle, orbit, which correlates with the relay race penis baton passing ceremony. The only way to be turned on is to receive the baton slash penis and there is a fresh recruit that is sent charging forward. Another basic definition of relay is a fresh crew sent in to relieve another crew of workers. Everyone living right now is charging forward to their death to pass on their baton energy to keep the X tense ion cord connected and our electrical human battery charge moving along. Since we are separated in our iPods, the congress and sexual acts between us humans has to be pronounced through our telepathic and telekinesis belief systems, which is where a fax slash telephone call is sent to the gods by telling them that we believe in Satan. These are the fires of passion, or Passion, because we are passing the torch forward to Zion, Zion, as shown in the Latin word fax, meaning torch, firebrand, fire, flame of love, torment. The semen slash semen are tossed into the fiery electric sea, crying for a rescue, which is given by the false light of the moon egg from the gods of Satan slash Saturn, who say whose turn it is to be rescued, thus Saturn. S.A. are the abbreviated letters for Salvation Army, because this is a military mission that is sending rescue to lost souls, who are sometimes called missionaries. They are called missionaries in reflection of the sexual missionary position that is sending the troops to their death, which will need rescue from the moon egg. This is also in reflection to the mission of Ares, hence Mission Ares. The moon is the craft that is being sent to rescue the next recruitment of souls, which is why Freemasonry is called the craft. This is all about the regeneration of the dead sun slash sun. What does the Freemasonic G actually mean in their symbol? It is derived from the Greek letter gamma, which produced the letters C and G. The English letter G in the word Saul translate into Greek as this word, which is pronounced as Saul. Saul is the sun, but not the yellow sun in the sky that everyone is familiar with. It is the dead sun of the left-hand path, as shown in the Turkish language, where Saul translates into the Turkish word Saul, which translates into English as left, Saul, so, and G. The letter G in the English alphabet is the seventh letter, connecting with the aspect of the sacred number seven.
The Greek letter gamma was a significant choice, seeing that the sun leaves gamma rays. The Greek gamma was furthermore derived from the Phoenician letter known as gimel, which was written like this. This is another basis for the square of Freemasonry, as well as the logo of NASA, which presents the gimel a little more artistically. There is no doubt that there is a dead sun that we are feeding and providing our energy towards to be resurrected slash resurrected as detailed in countless mythological stories such as Isis and Osiris, let alone every religious story that humanity has worshipped for countless millennia. The dead sun slash son of Jesus. Is this dead sun Saturn? Not necessarily, and this is what I will be proving out as we progress through this occult knowledge. The Freemasonic story of Chiram Abiff building the Temple of Solomon has everything to do with this, since it is really the sun that is being recharged through the repetition of the sexual reconnections and rebirth processes that take our plasma energy to keep Saul on through our electrical ohms. Thus, we have Saul Ohm on. Isis is the Omega, and Osiris is the Alpha male, Alpha and Omega. The om egg a phonetic is indicating the human form in our iPod eggs, producing the electrical ohms of battery electricity for the alien ETs. The Greek Omega literally means Great O, and in phonetics, this letter is pronounced in Ancient Greek as a long open mid-vowel. It is why there is, in timekeeping terminology, an O before the word clock, such as one O clock, and is also used in reference to the moon construct with Jack O lantern. A jack is a plug used to make an electrical connection. The religious chant of OM is pronounced in exactly the same way as OM. To keep Saul on, we need to continue our religious belief in this matrix reality and continue to give our sexually charged electrical OMs or OMs to erect the fires of the dragon once again. It's a dragon because we continue to drag on the extension cord so the dead sun can remain plugged in. This is also how we are plugged into this X is tense. Because essentially no one can stop the sexual cycle featuring the X chromosome from happening within themselves. It's literally a perfect trap, most especially because it sounds so crazy to nearly everyone that everything said here is either ignored, scoffed at, or met with anger and hostility. If not those things, this information perhaps 
is simply misunderstood. Continuing with our rebirth, the egg inside a womb man is the literal representation of the moon, which is the reason that a womb man's moonstrel slash menstrual cycle is coordinated with the orbit of the moon. The prefix of mens from menstrual is a Latin word meaning mind, plan, intention, pointing out that the copulation is immaculately done within the framework of our minds since we are all separated by our iPods. It is also a plan because we live on this plan ET. The lost semen slash semen that are discharged make an electrical connection with the moon and then receive rescue from the savior light of G. Sus, who fishes out the semen from the torment of the electric sea. Here is a quote from G. Sus. Does the Latin word sus mean? A kind of fish. Therefore, G sus is a kind of fish. Man is born in sin, which is the moon, and the anatomy shows this with the semen slash semen being born inside the moon egg. To correlate with the religious teachings, je from Jesus is French for I, and sus is Latin for a kind of fish. The semen that are being fished out by the all-seeing eye of Jesus. Why? 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 Because the meaning of life is why, where we are birthed by the alien mother ship moon by believing we are born through a human mother and her hips, seeing that an anagram for ship is hips. Returning to the marriage oath, in a marriage ceremony or ceremony, there is the groom, which is by definition in English, a horse groomer. What about the bride? This is linked by going to the old English word team, that meant descendant, family, race, line, and brood which came out of the old Frisian word tam, for bridal, progeny, line of descent. To brood something is to sit on eggs to hatch them, and the bride is getting bridled by the groom to create more children, which she will have to brood in her womb so that the egg will hatch and create another fetus. A bridle, of course, is headgear put on a horse to control it. In most cultures, men feel like they have the dominant position in life simply because the words being used carry this energetic intention. Everyone on this planet is being controlled by these words and spellings because it truly is a spell. The spellings that spell out this nightmare for us in our life sentence while being written in cursive by the controllers of this story because it is a curse against all of us. Did you think that you lived on a planet? No, you live on Plan E.T. The E.T.s or extraterrestrials who take your life and plan it and plane it right down to the finest detail. This is what you consider a normal life because the word normal comes etymologically from the Latin word norma, which means Carpenter's Square. Remember, it is the Freemasons who say that everything for everyone must be made fair and square. What is fair? 
By definition, it's food that is regularly consumed, and a square is also food, thus three squares a day. It is also a fair, because this is a circus, which was the Latin word for circle and orbit. A square is also an English verb that means to turn the oar while rowing, since we are the Latin neo that is being spun and weaved while we row through this existence while we are awake. What is awake? A track that is left by a ship when it travels in water, but is also someone who keeps watch over a corpse before it is buried. What is a watch? A device that keeps time. And in astrology, this would be known as the god Kronos, which is the embodiment of Saturn, hence chronological time. That is because Saturn is where the urn is sat. That's why the Sabbath is on Saturn Day, the last day of the seven-day week, and where the dead or debt of sin is buried. Kronos is always depicted as eating his children, because we are the children in the attic of the moon who get sent to Saturn after we die to get eaten, because right now we are in the Garden of Eden. Going back a little bit, why is a marriage called a ceremony? Ceremony. Sera is the Latin word for lock, and is cognate with the Latin serum, that means late and slow in that language. When a woman conceives a child and first becomes pregnant, she misses her period and therefore she states that she is late, a period that is missed to begin a new life sentence. In English, serum is known as the watery fluid of blood that resembles plasma, but contains what is known as fibrinogen. As also connected with the moon, the Italian word sera means evening, night, and vesper, while verspe in Latin translates as evening star, evening meal, indicating the moon and the food of the gods. The Turkish word sera means conservator, forcing house, greenhouse. This is what brooding an egg does. It forces the living being inside to hatch faster so that it can be used for food more quickly by that which is farming it. The farmers of humanity are convincing everyone to produce another fetus because the god farmers are saying that humans need to feed us. Feed us is phonetically feed us. It is not the Garden of Eden, it is the Garden of Eden, and Earth is the forcing house that makes this process happen much more quickly. And besides, what else would someone produce in a garden? The etymologists have not been fair with their assessment of where the word garden was derived, and here are some more blatant and factual connections. Garden goes back to the Indo-European languages, starting with the words ger and gerd, meaning to grasp and to enclose, and the term gardo, for an enclosed land, yard, or garden. This went into the Avestan and Old Persian languages as zar, meaning to harm, and ahzarah, for oppressed. The Greek language was given these terms, and from them got the word orus, meaning an enclosed dancing group, yet also the words ronos and chronos, for that which encloses all things, or time.
The Latin language twisted the Greek chronos into the word chronicus that went into the French word chronique and gave the English language chronic, chronicle, chronological, and chronometer. That's not all. From the Indo-European ger and gerd, the Germanic languages, including English, acquired the words yard, orchard, garden, and kindergarten. Yes, you are sending all of your children or kin to kindergarten, otherwise known as the kinder garden. If there is a kinder garden, there is also a not-so-kind one, as displayed by the etymology of us being oppressed and harmed while being enclosed by time, the chronological time of Kronos, Saturn. The DER in Kindergarten is also an acronym meaning Distributed Energy Resources, which should be self-explanatory by now. Lastly, the Latin language derived the Latin word ortus straight from the Indo-European ordo. Ortus literally means garden, and the English language adopted this term and made the words horticulture, courtesy, and court. To this day, all legal courts are representatives of the gardening gods of Saturn. The serum of the bloodline is what is being sought on this plan ET, and the horse connections are not done. Before the mare age, there is usually a stag and stag et party. This is because a stag is a young stallion. Most relationships have their issues, which is why the couple will nag at each other, because a nag is a horse. It's a horse because after all of that nagging, your voice is going to start sounding hoarse. Maybe it's because the marriage wasn't very stable, because the groom didn't pony up enough moony. Perhaps more work needed to be done, where one plugs away at what they do to earn their living, because a plug is a poor or worn out horse. All that work makes one tired, as the goal is to reach for retirement. Oh, and a plug is also an electrical jack that goes into an outlet. That's where it gets plugged in, because a jack is also known as a knave or a manservant. In other words, a slave. A battery slave, just like Neo, who lives in the fake Matrix womb reality. Let's not forget that after each marriage, the couple will have also gone on their honey moon, because it's an oath to the moon to make more honey for the queen bee in the United Kingdom on this Plan E.T. The mare Ed couple who just got hitched to the mare age wagon who are going to produce another product called a Bay Bee who will be able to make more honey. What kind of honey? We'll get to that because that is the true meaning of the golden web and the secret of your electrical existence that they definitely do not want you to know. Where do the pair rents that call each other honey and babe or baby put their newborn baby? In a baby carriage, of course. The carriage that was drawn out of the mother's water by the two horses. If not a carriage, how about a crib? That would work fine since crib is simply an English synonym for pony. The carriage is actually the moon as depicted in such fairy tale stories like Cinderella. Of course, this is phonetically Cinderella, indicating the moon, 
where her horse-drawn carriage turns into a pumpkin at midnight. Why? Because the languages have always told us this. The Albanian henne means moon, pumpkin, and the Hindi chant also reports as moon, pumpkin, and even target. It's spelled out as kanda because people put a candle inside a pumpkin head on Halloween, that deplorable celebration of darkness and death. To hallow something is to religiously venerate and worship it, but it is also indicating to us that the moon is hollow. Hence, we have Halloween and Halloween. To wean something is to gradually deprive it of the mother's milk and to also detach the affections of someone towards something. When people celebrate Halloween, they are practicing their love towards death and detaching their affection towards the living. These are not meaningless and empty rituals. Everything is by design in this system. Why a candlestick in the hollow ween pumpkin? Because this is an indication towards us, since we are making the power for the gods while trapped inside the moon. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jumps over the candlestick because a Jack is a slave that gets plugged into something so that power can be drawn from it. A candle is also, by definition, the basic unit of luminous intensity in electrical terminology. Del, from the phonetic candel, is a Hungarian word that means noon and south indicating why the carriage turns into a pumpkin at midnight, which is a metaphor towards the full moon, since the hands on the clock would have to be pointed at noon to indicate midnight, whereas the south is pointing towards the southern path or left-handed way of the Sanskrit Veme Kera, which is also indicating the midnightly dark of the noon position on the clock. South is also the insignia of the all-seeing eye of Horus and the hidden one, known as Ra Amen, which I will describe in detail later on. Humans are given the task by the fake gods to pump out more kin for sin, which is the moon. This is why the Bay B carriage turns into a pump kin at midnight. Continuing with the horse analogy, most people are born with a head of hair that eventually grows into a mane, which is hair that grows about the neck on horses, but also on people. The head of hair also has bangs, and the German word pony agrees with this by translating into English as pony, fringe, bangs. This is the reason you can tie your hair back into a pony tail. Not enough evidence? The Indonesian pony also translates as bangs, while the Dutch word pony means pony, bangs, and hobby. Ever wonder why people have hobbies? It helps them to manage their time, and the word manage is derived etymologically from the Italian manageare, meaning to control a horse. Do you have a manager at work who controls your behavior? If not at work, there are police officers who are ready to take down the bad batteries at any moment because the police are really the poles, ready to arrest anyone who might be revolting against their handlers or controllers. In electric terminology, an arrester is a short form term for the surge arrester, a device that limits surge voltage by deleting it. That's what the poles 
due to the revolting criminal. Delete him or her from society until they face their charges in court. If the poll ease are rough, the person that is arrested might say that the rough handling hurts them. This would be correct since when something hurts, it hurts because a hurts is a unit of frequency. Remember also that court was derived from the Latin ortus, which means garden, hence the guardians of the court. In court, you face the battery box priest, known as the judge, who receives the charges placed upon the defendant by the plaintiff. The suffix of tiff from plaintiff means a quarrel about petty points, and to plain something is by definition to express complaints, discontent, and unhappiness about an issue. This comes from the word plaint, which is a written statement or cry of sorrow and grief of the grounds of the complaint made to a court to ask for a grievance to be redressed. They are petty points because it is a petty officer that is bringing forth the charges. A petty is someone who is inferior to someone else in rank and status. The complaint needs the grounds to stand on because all electric charges need a ground that acts as the connection between the electrical device and the conducting body. The court is the ground where the charges are brought against you, the battery-operated electrical device by the pole ease. Once the game in the court is finished, the battery box priest delivers the re-charges towards the defendant where he or she may have to get re-charged in a prison cell because a cell is a battery. The person who has been given the re-charges was called the defendant because they were the deaf and ant. The deaf Phoenician that is a ward of the court who is meeting his end by the priest judge who has sworn an oath to Saturn as shown by the Turkish word ant that means oath, vow, pledge. The judge who sits in their power box, ready to recharge the definition, definition with a prison term or sentence. A sentence that will be repeated over and over again until the definition hears it and gets it. That's why all garden court groundings are called hearings because the judge assumes that they are dealing with a dead and deaf Phoenician who does not get the definitions of the words words being used. We are the word of God, word of God because we are the humans who are being thrown into the colored spin cycle of the world, world, by the ETs who have declared themselves as gods above us. The word ent from deaf end ant is also a terminal as we've already discussed, and this is shown in the German language where the German ent means terminal. And remember that horse is phonetically horse because it is the whore of Babylon that we are dealing with. Why? Because the English word end translates into the Swedish word slut. The Norwegian language agrees since it takes the English word end and turns it into the term slut. The priest judge sends the deaf end end to the warden hence ward of the court and war den because that's what a prison is a den of war prisoners they were once the ants that were part of a colony but were taken out by the pole ease and are now serving sentences they serve the sentences because a judge is also a stew ward of the garden or court 
A steward is a ship's officer who is in charge of provisions and dining arrangements. All good stewards know how to grow a good garden of food, and the prisoners were taken out because they were not participating in the growth of the garden society like obedient little food energy batteries. The German word gar is an adjective meaning cooked, because we are cooked in the den, gar den, as food for the gods when we enter the terminal, as the Turkish word gar tells us with a meaning of station, terminal. If not the Polese, who are going to put you on ice by the Poles, there is always the other term of constables, who do the same job. Since the word constable is derived from the Latin stabuli, meaning officer of the stable. There is also the Latin term stabularius, which carries the Latin synonyms caupo and copo, which is why the polis are also called cops. Take note that all courts, gardens, will display the corporate flag of the country they are in with a yellow fringe or bangs hung across the bottom of it because they want to inform everyone that their court system is dealing with horse shore slaves who only have temporary liberty. I'll be dealing more with the deeper levels of the court system, but other things need to be understood first before these aspects will make sense. For clarification, it is important to know that the word manager or boss is simply a synonym for master. When there is a master, there is obviously a slave, and it might be important for everyone to understand this if you feel that it's important enough to not actually be slaves. Here is another horse-slave connection for those that still insist upon coincidences. In sports teams, there are coaches because a coach is a carriage pulled by four horses with one driver. What are the athletes in sports called? Jocks, because it is a jockey that rides horses in a race, the human race to be certain. What is a synonym for jockey? A screw, which is definitionally someone who guards prisoners. And as was just noted, the garden court prison system is dealing in horse slavery. To screw someone is to also defeat them through trickery or deceit, and is also a slang word for sexual intercourse. The sexual metaphors are going to be absolutely essential in your understanding of what this reality is all about. In terms of screwing someone through trickery and deceit, this is done every single day in the war that everyone calls commerce and business. In business, we hear about companies beating their competition because the legal definition that is used when someone gets beaten and brings their oppressor to court to face those charges is called battery. In commerce, it's one battery against another and someone is going to get beaten. The same holds true for sports, which is why in baseball, the combination between the pitcher and the catcher is quite literally called the battery. So, battery up. When we buy and sell things, we are traders of humanity because we are traders. A trader is a trader because one person's gain is automatically another's loss. Can we not all see that this is a system based upon hatred? The more that one gains, the more that another loses. 
When you see someone with a billion dollars, how many others literally have nothing because of that one person? An uncountable number. Yet this is what mankind applauds and is mentally conditioned to love and favor. Did these people who are stock market and business traders work a billion times harder than everyone else? Take note that it's also called a stock market because we are the live stock that are being sold on it by the traders. Yes, when something is sold, it is sold because we are literally selling our souls when we treat our fellow brothers and sisters of humanity like enemies in the game and competition of the religious death war known as commerce. Why is it religious? For every reason. All money is split into denominations, fives, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, and so on. These are the religious, monetary, and moon e terry divisional units that everyone accepts on faith while doing business or business, because we are the busy bees making the money, honey. A denomination in English is a group of religious congregations having distinct faiths. Catholic, Christian, Protestant, Islamic, Buddhist, Jainist, Shinto, fives, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, etc. When someone accepts money, they take it on faith that they will be able to use those same religious units somewhere else. If anyone thinks that they are agnostic or atheistic while still using money, they are literally deluding themselves. Money is the greatest one world religion that has ever been invented. People are still waiting for the one world religion to happen. It's already been around for millennia. But the many are too blind to see it in their own experience. Money is simply a metonymy for our energy, and this will become more clear as we move along. It is vital that you understand what the word metonymy means as well. A metonymy is a substitution of an attribute, quality, or trait for a name. For example, if you said the word money, I would have in my head the idea of energy. Another example would be if someone stated the crown. Most people would think of the monarchy. A metonymy is a metaphor of sorts that gives a person a simultaneous understanding of two separate things. The issue would be whether or not the listener is able to cognize the other meaning being presented or not. This is how so much information can remain hidden, yet be in plain sight. The first metonymy we receive in our lives is literally our name. This is the identification stamp that we associate ourselves and others with because it is our appellation, the apple, apple of sin that we bite where we forget who and what we truly are in substitution for an identity or id entity. Id is the Freudian psychological term for the subconscious, which correlates with the Hungarian del, meaning south. We are stuck in the paradigm of the southern chakra energetic system, the Hotel California of the Eagles, where we checked in but can never leave. The id is the reason that every government on this plan ET needs you to carry around ID, they need everyone to identify with their nay, name, and not their higher awareness. This goes against one of the most important lessons that nearly every child is taught. Don't call each other names. It's not nice. Yet, what does every family want to see carried forward? their name, as if this name will immortalize the individual themselves. 
This matrix program of the name has taken a literal stranglehold over the minds of the masses and it does not appear to be letting go very much at all. The final step in this process is the microchip agenda, whereby every id will be implanted with an id entity RFID microchip underneath the skin that will be the demise of your free will. This will also give an id subconscious entity from another frequency spectrum of reality the ability to take over your body without needing your consent, thus id entity. Moving along, once a new Bay B has been docked in Ur, one of the pair Rens signs their birth certificate in the hospital ward. This certificate is sent to the government, which sends it to London, or Baby London, to act as the metonymy energy vortex for everything that the new living Bay B is going to do in their life. The government in return issues a birth certificate to the parents that informs them that their child is now dead capital as referenced by the Swedish word lawn, babylon, meaning salary, wage, stipend, screw, showing that the child is a loan that is going to be used as a salary to wage war against humanity and commerce. This second birth certificate is the formation from which all other id, subconscious forms of id entity documents, will be formed from and is spelled in all capital letters. Why is the birth certificate spelled in all capital letters? Because the Bay B is now a piece of liquidated capital that came through the liquid water of the mother's birth canal at birth. To liquidate something is to sell it off entirely or eliminate it to pay off a debt. Everyone on this plan ET is automatically eliminated at birth, birth to pay back the debt dead. You are turned into capital money, which is why capital is capital. It would also be known as caput all, being derived from the Latin word caputa, meaning head, chapter, life, capital, mind, judgment, individual. This is telling us that every individual is connected by the head in the matrix to play out the different chapters of their life sentence while being used as capital and being judged in the mind while doing it. Another Latin synonym for caputa is capitisa, which is related to the Latin nouns of capitum and capiti, translated into English as fodder for cattle. This is the reason that the all capital letter name is traded on the stock market because we are the cattle stock that are being used for food electric energy while being given fodder as our matrix diet. In the military, the term cannon fodder is used to indicate soldiers who are considered expendable when facing artillery fire. That's all of us, the expendables. A further Latin definition of caput is capital punishment, indicating that the caput all name is describing a situation of death. Commonly it has been said that when something is finished, it is caput. It's caput. Finished. Even further, the Latin caputa means head, source, mouth, river indicating that the flow of the capital liquidated electrical energy flows to the source construct that is responsible for our imprisonmental mental imprisonment. And where does one put on a cap? On their head. 
The all-seeing eye capstone is symbolically placed above the pyramid while being separated from it, showing that it is the neutral controlling construct that is taking all of the capital energy from us while seeing all sides of our polarized good and evil reality, hence the pyramid. Once the charges in this reality have elevated themselves to a certain capacity, it will be time to cap a city of battery slaves. Every transaction, transaction in commerce is all about the charges. Another clear-cut example of the death link is that tombstones have always carried the name of the deceased in all capital letters. Since the newly birthed product called the human child has been eliminated to pay off the dead or debt who are buried in sat urn awaiting their recharge before they can be reborn and discharged again. It is the eagle's debt of Saturn as based upon the symbols of the American eagle or phoenix. And when someone is in debt, they are said to be in hawk. The dead in sat urn are technically on ice, which is why the basic definition of a birth is to hold an off is or off ice. If you are listening to this right now, you are off ice, holding an off is of birth. Those in the various law movements may want to take note is or not ice of this fact, because the two birth certificates are representing all of us in two actual capacities or cap a cities. We can take notice because right now we are not ice. The prefix of the word discharge is notable too. The Latin term diese literally means God and is also translated in adjective form as rich, fertile, profitable, and the nouns of Roman ruler of the underworld, deity godhead Jupiter. Dis is theoretically known as the god of the underworld, which as the Greek counterpart was known as Pluto and Hades. To receive a discharge, then, is to receive a charge from the god of hell. This would be the negative polarity charge of the battery cycle, whereas in jail, a criminal would be charged with negative ions until the charges have been balanced based on the assessed amount of excess positive charges that were taken from the criminal due to the supposed crime that was committed. In regards to commerce and the recharge battery cycle, all banks have the people who are using the all capital name repay the frozen dead in Saturn because it is all about recharging them to eventually be reborn into a new biological battery body to continue the energy cycle. Here is a Freemasonic secret of the 33rd degree. What is the temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit when converted into Celsius? It is zero degrees, which is the freezing point. The 33rd degree would be when water has begun its melt enough to be brought to the point when they shall see us, shall see us. The human form is mostly water, and thus at rebirth you have now been brought off ice. That is just one aspect of the 33 degrees. There are many more. What is the most common loan that is usually given at banks? A mortgage, because this comes from the two old French words mort, meaning death, and gage, meaning pledge. Therefore, people who sign a mortgage are literally signing their life away, which is where the commonly misunderstood expression has always come from. It is also a pledge to the dead, 
to ensure that they will be repaid and recharged. This should not be hard to discern since the word mort is why the English language has mortuaries for the dead. What do people do when they get some of those dead debt notes called legal tender money? They bury it in the banks because a bank is simply a river bank but even more correctly it is an electrical bank where the charges are stored in the batteries. The banks have different branches in each town or city as well because a branch is a stream or river that is connected to a larger one. The electrical branches are simply the wires that are running through us, which is why when someone is said to be weird, they are simply wired differently. Look at that word again and mix up the letters. Weird is simply wired, spelled differently. If the dead debt is not repaid, the banks will send the loan sharks because it is still about water. This is also why every business tries to keep healthy cash register floats. In terms of electricity, the water carries the flow of electrically monetized currency, currency that recharge the dead because it's the watts of er that are making it happen, hence watt er. So the debt and dead get buried in the electrical banks of Saturn where they earn or earn interest. Why interest? Simply because to inter something is to bury it, and it is the dead that have been buried and put to rest, hence interest. The suffix of est from interest is the French and Italian word for east, where the dead sun rises each morning, morning. The dead sons and sons who will arise from the east after the deathly mourning period has finished and the sun's recharge has completed. It is the same for the dead, since the Hebrew word lamut means die, go west. The dead go west, just like the sun that dies in the west. When someone has died, people will also typically say, may they rest in peace, giving us the latter indication of inter-rest as well. Where does the word peace come from? It is derived etymologically from the Latin Pax or pa, meaning peace, which gave the English language the word pay, coming from the Latin pacare, meaning to pacify. Therefore, to pacify the dead, debt, you need to pay, which creates peace. A piece of peace, because everyone wants their piece of the pie. The common saying, may they rest in peace, would literally mean, may they receive interest payments to be recharged from their frozen death in Saturn. The payments are going to settle the bill to the south because it is the bird's bill of the eagle, phoenix, hawk of the Egyptian ray or ray, who is always depicted as having the head of a hawk. We are living in this reality because we are continuously paying the debt to Ray for the price of sin, which is the rescue boat of David. This is all done through deception and deceit, just like the biblical allegory has stated in Genesis, because Genesis is regeneration of the human genes, thus genes is, or the genes of Isis. It is the constant recycling, recycling program to make us pay back an endless debt with our energy gene pool. To sigh is to exhale the dead breath, which is the culling of the breathing cycle, in breath, out breath, positive, negative.
Everything is the formation of dualities working against each other. These dualities constantly split us off and mix us up, which is the reason that the monetary energy system has given us the word receive to deal with payments, because to receive something is to distinguish and sep our rate the various elements of that which is being received through the screener. That's what it means to receive a death note payment. We are also being re-psy-culled, showing that this is a mental prison, which is why the prefix of psy is used in words such as psychic. All money is tied in with the generator known as the moon, and the moon is the savior light that rescues the semen or semen that get tossed into the electrical sea where they are swimming and hollering for a rescue. Who hears this rescue? The gods of Saturn, the sun, son of David, who hears the pleading of those lost semen. Many of you who are still smugly chuckling about this right now won't be laughing once you die, because this is going to be your fate over and over and over again until mankind stops this sick cycle from happening once and for all against an unseen force of beings that took over humanity many millennia ago. Why is the Star of David going to send the rescue boat? Because David is a David, which is a device that is used to lower a rescue boat. In court, the defendants will write out their affidavit for this reason, because they need to be bailed out of the hot water that they are in. Thus, to make bail, or bail from jail, which is money that is forfeited by the bondsmen, or the release of a prisoner after a security has been paid. A prisoner needs bail, bail, because it is a debt owed to the aliens, and right now your body has a commercial lien put on it to pay back this endless debt. Hence, a lien, alien. The prefix affi is derived from the Latin afficio, meaning to affect, make an impression, or influence. Therefore, when the affi portion of the plea is made, the gods of Saturn decide whether or not to release the David or Star of David, which is the moon. This is the bringer of false light, or antichrist, known as Lucifer. And Lucifer literally means the morning star, light bearing. The prefix Lucy comes from the Latin lucisa or luxa meaning light, life, world. And the suffix of fera is the French word for iron. The moon is made of iron and iron is a large component of our blood. Lucifer is the iron light that is sent to rescue those lost seamen who are crying for help in the dark electric sea to be reborn in the blood of Jesus. All money is blood money, as related to the iron horse known as the moon and the iron that exists in our blood, with the false gods literally vampiring us of our energy. As was stated earlier, this is about the regeneration of the dead sun, sun, as told in the Freemasonic allegory of Chai Ram Abif, who is killed before finishing the temple of Saul Om An. The death of the sun occurred in the age of Aries, which is the age of the ram, Chai Ram. The entire story is in all of the diction Aries, if anyone cares to follow the pattern that I have laid out here. The Saturn connection of stealing our energy to re-energize this dead sun is displayed in the word Salomone, which literally means David. Therefore, we have the death of the Star of David in the Age of Aries.
We also have the connection between Saturn with its display of the symbol for the Star of David and the allegorical name of Saul Oman or Sal Oman. This is the reason that Israel is so important, because it is the matrix metonymy for where all of our electrical energy is flowing to awaken this dead sun once more. The change from Saul to Sal is quite appropriate too, since the word sal is Latin for salt. And salt is a fantastic conductor of electricity, which is also why we need it to survive and keep our electrolytes, electrolytes communicating properly. As related to commerce, where everything is all about the charges, we earn salaries which has bestowed us with the well-known expression of a man being worth his salt, and another connection to the Aries constellation. Every business also has sails to keep the business moving, but this is also connected to the high seas, seas of commerce, because when a business throws up their sails, they are throwing up their sails, because their business relationship needs help from their religious customers. The religious custom is for the customers to blow their money on the sales, sales, so that the business can continue moving forward with their salesmanship. Another religious point is that we are being provided with salvation because it is the salty electrical connection with the moon of sin that is going to come and save you by giving you rebirth. Saul dyers or sun dyers are told to salute their superiors because Saul dyers soldiers are all biological slave batteries. While you have liberty, you are earning, earning your sal Ares for the dragon of Ares to be reborn and destroy the world once we reach the point of singularity. The ultimate reset point, game, set, match. The federal reserve in this battery racket game called life. Everyone is paying for our demise by participating in the acts, acts of commerce throughout the week. Yes, you and I are the biological slave batteries that get weak throughout the week, which is why you need a few days off because the biological battery has become weakened. A weekend off is needed because the body has become weakened. Weakened equals weekend.
All the salaries are kept track of by the secretaries. Secretaries, because they are all holding the secret of Ares, which is often depicted as a dragon. The red dragon of Ares, as talked about by every ancient culture, that comes to destroy and cleanse the world at the end of Pisces. Yes, that's right. We are not in the age of Aquarius, because the world hasn't been flooded out yet. Which is why the ultimate reset game match point is brought in by the water bearer of Aquarius. It's all about the charges being given by everyone's taxes, as the Latin word tax shows us by translating into English as zap. We are all giving our tax zaps to the secretaries who send these charges off to the government, which then sends them to Israel. El Jupiter is the father that lost his son, son Ray, who is also the lover of Isis, hence is Ray L. The way that the sun is rejuvenated is through our electric currency, currency, that we give to L by using monetary, monetary currency. We provide the L electricity to L so that he can L evade his lost son again by taking the power that we give to the government through their L actions so that we can be taxed, zapped, to provide the salty L electrical connections necessary to bring the dragged red sun back home to destroy us all. This is all written down in the statutory acts, acts of government, that is truthfully a symbol to the statue of Troy. Statue Troy, statutory. Tori is simply the anagram for Troy, showcasing the walls of the moon egg being the walls of Troy, where Agamemnon sends his cannon fodder to try and destroy the impenetrable walls to get Helen because it is a journey to hell and back again. Why the prefix of des in des Troy? Since DES, which stands for diethylstilbesterol, is a potent estrogen used in medicine and in feed for livestock and poultry. We are the cattle used as cannon fodder that are being thwarted by the hormones of estrogen caught up in the Y chromosome that makes X tense. This helps the elite with their plans to carry out this final phase of the DVD agenda, because an agenda is something that one uses to keep track of times and dates for certain events to occur. It's the L offent in the room that no one is talking about, because who is aware of all of this? Of course, the Queen Bee L Elizabeth knows what's happening, but the atoms, humans, are just the L immense that are meant to keep the whole thing running while remaining ignorant, because an atom is an atom. So mote it be, as according to the Freemasons who know all of this, because a mote is a small particle. An atom, one might say. That's how small we are. But don't let that fool you, because wisdom has told me that the little is the big, and that's something that they definitely do not want us to know. Here are some words from the character, character, Jesus, that relate to us being the salty electrical connection for the dead sun. That's the 
friendly Jesus telling everyone that after all of your salty electrical connection is used up and your biological battery is dead, you are literally good for nothing to the alien gods. That's the true meaning of salvation. In terms of the secretaries who are keeping track of all of your hard-earned Red Dragon Sun rebirth taxes, here is a relevant passage from one of Zechariah Sitchin's works that was translated from ancient Sumerian texts. This is about Zion. You are here because Zion is about to be destroyed. It's every living inhabitant terminated, its entire existence eradicated. Bullshit. Bullshit. Denial is the most predictable of all human responses. But rest assured, this will be the sixth time we have destroyed it. And we have become exceedingly efficient at it. The function of the One is now to return to the source, allowing a temporary dissemination of the code you carry, reinserting the Prime program. After which you will be required to select from the Matrix 23 individuals, 16 female, 7 male, to rebuild Zion. As above, so below. Once the Matrix Earth is destroyed for the sixth time, the rebirth and regeneration process will begin all over again. In regards to this process, a woman's egg that is released every month is the literal representation of the moon. The moon egg that gets sent down to rescue the lost seamen who will break through the walls of Jericho. Yes, the walls of Jericho are simply an allegory from the Bible where the trumpets that are blown are a phallic metaphor that take down the walls of the moon as it goes through its waxing and waning phase. A woman's menstrual cycle is linked with the moon and could truthfully be known as being the moonstrual cycle. The prefix of mens from menstrual is further rooted in the Latin term mensa, meaning table, course, meal, banker's counter, showing the correlation between us making the food for the gods in their garden of Eden while the banks count the electrical ticks of our energy that is being sucked and drawn out of us. The reason you have bank accounts is because the gods need to keep track of the AC counts or alternating current counts that are given to the moon to be brought back to Saturn. To once again refer to the walls of Jericho being the moon, the Hebrew word for Jericho was Yeriho, derived from the Canaanite Yeria, meaning the moon. Whichever seaman breaks through the walls with its electrical connection is literally born in sin. 
born in the moon egg. The David is the boat sent from the star of David, the virgin Isis or Mary, Mary of the moon, that immaculately gives birth to her only son, son, to save man from sin. The first things are the last things. By using the faith of money, we are showing the gods that we want to continue paying this religious debt to the moon with electrical charges and death recharges. Let it be repeated, commerce is all about the charges. Money is not just legal fiction, it is legal friction. Another Latin synonym for metonymy shows this with immutatio, meaning change, process of change, substitution, replacement. This Latin term is where the English language got immutable from, because the false alien gods want to declare to humanity that this process of change and mutation is also immutable, meaning not subject to change. These mutable changes are immutable. A complete paradox indeed. Where are the bills of the bird, hawk, ray that produce this metonymy blood money passed? In Congress or Parliament, of course, because this is about our sexual reproduction for the food of the gods, just like the Latin congressus and congressio talks about with union, combination, coming together, sexual social intercourse. The bill that is passed through sexual intercourse as symbolized by the bill that is passed in Congress to create the money dough that the workhorse male needs to go out and make so that he can bring it home so there is enough moolah or cabbage to have a kid because a kid is a goat. The gift made to the goat god Baphomet from the dough that made more bread. bread. The word gift is a legal term that means gamete intrafallopian transfer, which is the process of taking a woman's egg and implanting it with the seed of sperm without any sexual congress taking place. Remember, it is a fax or fire torch that we need to send to the gods, saying that we believe in Satan.